2000 Mustang 4.6 GT manual trans you're gonna replace the clutch first thing you want to do is disconnect your battery put it in neutral make sure your wheels are supported so it doesn't roll off wherever you're on go underneath remove the support from the subframe <clears throat> to the body remove your drive shaft 12 millimeter star point, 12 point. Drain your trans fluid. Then you'll have to work on your exhaust. From here, up to the manifolds. Take them off the manifolds. Make sure you penetrate them. Do not break them off. You need these pipes and cats out of the way so you can get this trans out. After we take this uh, cross member out, we'll both tell what kind of shifter he's got. So I have to find out which way to remove it. So this is where we're at right now. There's that bracket that goes to the body, to the subframe. Seems like every bolt, frozen, twisted, busted, whatever all rusted in there you got the white pipe out I had to heat up my uh, studs, stud nuts I cut those off so I'll get new bolts for that waste my time it's a little tricky on this side getting the pass for the starter mounts into the bell housing Right here, that one sticks out a little bit. That one sticks out. Makes it a little hard. You have to squeeze it in there and pass it. Pass it. So if you ain't got it high enough, you ain't gonna get it out. The vehicle that is. Okay. Now you take out the drive shaft. The 12 millimeter, 12 points. Take all those out. I recommend draining the fluid in the trans, just that way you get a new, that way you get the trans fluid changes. It's just, uh, what is that, uh, whatever Ford trans fluid they use, automatic trans fluid, the red stuff, LV, LV or 5, one of the two, but they're, most of the time you buy them they're together, so. And then you drain it and remove your cross member. And before you move your cross member, take your starter out. These are always easy. Ha ha ha. Okay. Take the starter out. There's the Ford starter. Make sure you spray your terminals with some uh, penetrant. And let it soak. You don't let it soak long enough. You know bust a little 10 millimeter head off of the small terminal so now I gotta get another starter but anyway starter sits in there like that you can get to this one really easy on the bottom you get this one not too bad but this one is tucked way up underneath the side of the block and you can't even see it so you don't need to get in there with a swivel headed 10 and a swivel and a, and a socket, not a socket, an extension and a ratchet. So it ends up about right about here. So you can break it loose and then ratchet it out. And hopefully, you got an air ratchet too. Okay. Now we'll work on the uh, take the drive shaft out. Get all your bolts out of the drive shaft. Now you want to mark it, some yellow paint and mark it so you can go back together, know where it exactly came out. If it doesn't come loose, you really hit it with a hammer, it'll, it'll come loose, it'll come loose. And then just take it off. You gotta go for a little bit, get past a little ridge, and you're done. There it is, man. Okay, make sure you drain your fluid. 
So I'm gonna drain my fluid now. So that way I don't make a mess later. Ah, right there's the drain plug. Takes that 3 8 your 3 8 ratchet. Take it off, take it out, drain it into your pan. When it's done dripping, put the plug back in and snug it up. Remember, it's just aluminum. Do not use an impact on it, you'll crack it. And then the fill plug is up there. Yeah, right there, it looks exactly the same. So when you fill it, fill it up there. Takes uh, LV Dextron, not Dextron, but you know, the uh, Mercon 5. Okay. This one's got a clutch cable. So what I need to do is get the cable off of the fork. And I'll just get a pry bar in there and, and I'll pry the fork forward. And when you do that, you can push the cable in towards the fork. And there's a bigger hole there. And you can, let's see. Let's see if I can get it, huh? Let's see. Okay. I got it. Wow. A little bit bigger on the inside. And then you can just... There might be a clip holding on over here. It's an E-clip right there. Take the E-clip out and then you can pull the whole cable out. That's what the E-clip looks like. Just get a screwdriver underneath it. And pry, twist it and pry it off. Or the cable. Now you can pull the cable out. Yeah. Let's see if we can pull the cable out. Get my hand on it. Wiggle it around. Pull it. Out as straight as possible. Okay. Got your transmission supported. Remove your trans mount cross member. Take the bolts out. There's four bolts. Two before thirteens. Lower down the trans a little bit and so you can get access to your shifter plate. There's four bolts holding that in. Remove the four 13 millimeter head bolts. Smack the housing of the shifter. Break it loose. Let it sit up in there. And then now you can possibly load the trans down a little bit more and you can take your trans bell housing bolts out. Okay. That would look like 13s possibly, so I'll work on that. And when you're doing these trans bell housing bolts, there's two on the front for a, for a shield by the oil pan. One there, and one over here. Take those out. And when you got all your cross member bolts loose and out, on the very, very top, there's a wire harness connected to a bracket for the top two bolts. Make sure you get those top two bolts out of the bracket or pull the whole bracket assembly away so the bolts come out. And then once you do that, then you can pry back the trans out of the clutch and then slowly work it back and then lower it down. You know, you pry between the engine and the bell housing. Do it lightly because it might be stuck. If it's stuck on the corrosion, then you'll have to spray some penetrant around it and then work your way around both sides trying to break it loose. Pretty drastic angle had to come out. I also had to jack up the front of the engine. Put a block under the harmonic balancer. That will help tilt the engine down in the back because the input shaft was sticking inside the flywheel and it wouldn't allow me to come down anymore and 
these, one on each side was sitting the bell housing, I mean not the bell housing, the uh, the body, you know, inside the tub. So I think going together, I'll just take a hacksaw, a hacksaw that one off, and a hacksaw that one off, because they were hitting pretty good. Let's see if somebody else has been up in there on the marks, you know. If it was mine, I'd trim it. So, if I ever have to do it again, it would help me out, you know. So now I'll do the clutch. I'm going to push the trans back and I'll unbolt the clutch. If you got yourself an input shaft, put the input shaft in there. Then you can take all your uh, pressure plate uh, bolts out. And then you can pry it off the little dowels and then... Hopefully that little input shaft you put in there to guide will uh, keep it from falling on your feet. Okay, it looks pretty worn. Yeah. I'll find out when I get inside there and get a better look. Okay. Looks like a fairly new clutch. Got I still got the machine grooves in here. Still got some pretty good distance in the rivets. I have a lot of grayish dust buildup on the uh, trans side of the clutch. That would be the pressure plate side, like this. So I pulled out the fork, this type of ball type. I pulled it straight. I pulled it straight out that way. And unclips it from the ball, which is right here, the ball. And these things clip right into the ball. And then, kind of looking at it a little bit, it's like, hmm, looks kind of goofy. And it's kind of worn more here than over here. It's kind of sharp. And this is not supposed to be like that. Uh, that's defective. Great. Great, great, great. So he was complaining of a lot of squeaking weird noises, he said. Okay, now I gotta replace the trans.